Now, Ezra had arrived in Jerusalem and he saw certain things in Jerusalem. These things were what I would call blatant sin, present sin. People were committing sin and they were doing it. Let's, let's read it and you'll see how he fasted and the result. We are going to read uh, Ezra chapter 9 to a point and then we'll go to chapter 10. Now, chapter 9 from verse 1. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land. You remember that scripture in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Um, what's that, what, 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 what does it say again now? Do, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. These people were unequally yoked. So that's what he's saying here. Doing according to the abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those land. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished or confounded. Then we assembled, then were assembled unto me everyone that trembled at the word of the God of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness. And having rent my, my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God. Let's, read, let's take six. And said, O my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God. For our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up unto heavens. You can see how we fasted. He made his confessions and included him, says, our sins, not their sins, our sins. And he wept before the Lord. He prayed and wept before the Lord. Now let's go to chapter 10. You can read the rest on your own. Chapter 10 from verse 1. Now when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed weeping, and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. He, he triggered, as it were, a corporate fast, a congregational mourning. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. Then arose Ezra and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word, and they swear. So you see the fasting, you see the result. That after a while somebody can say, ah, ah, we didn't know that the matter is like this. That it is that this is the issue. Ah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a matter that cannot be resolved. Eh? We, is it not, we will let them go. We will let the women go. We will dissociate from them. Eh, take, take heart, take heart. Just, just come and, and encourage the people. Come and, come and stand with the word of God and we will make a covenant before the Lord. We will dismiss these people. And he did. And got them to swear that they will do these things. When we begin to see blatant sin in the church and you know that only a revival by the Holy Ghost will make this thing work. We need to fast. We need to wait upon the Lord and cry to the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy. It doesn't matter that other people are not fasting. You fast. 
you wait upon the Lord. God will begin to quicken the hearts of people to join you in that expedition of waiting upon him.